So step one, uh, and it's it's probably the most, it's potentially the most important step. So steps one to four we'll go through. They'll, they'll give us the, re they're going to set us up for success and they'll bring us to a place where hopefully, you know, the interventions will almost choose themselves when we get to step five. So step one is I'm calling it grow committed leadership, grow committed and aligned leadership. So this is a process, as I've said. So this is all about building relationships with our leadership teams. It's about bringing them on the, on the, the journey of well-being with us. For some of us, we'll be pushing an open door with leadership teams. They'll be bought into it. They'll get it. For others, it'll be a different ballgame. It'll be people will think, oh, that, that well-being nonsense, that's just fluff. Now get back to work. So for those, we, we'll, have, we'll have a different uh, challenge on our hands. But regardless of where we are with our leadership teams, it pretty much boils down to this. And Adam Grant, he's probably the kind of the thought leader out there uh, on organizational psychology. He sums it up really nicely with, if you want to bring people on a, on a if you want to bring leaders and people on a, on a well-being journey with you, it's about hard data. So show them the evidence, show them the facts, show them the numbers, be that uh, from external research, or, and couple that with your own internal, maybe survey data, whatever you're doing internally, and then add in the human stories. So some personal stories of people maybe overcoming, uh, maybe it's an illness, maybe someone, uh, of course, running a marathon, you, you know, just matching it up with those personal stories uh, that people can relate to. So that's how he summarizes it.